Hello everybody. So today we need to diagnose a vacuum leak in this 2000 Acura 3.2 TL. And I think it might be coming from an engine mount, but I want to diagnose the whole engine mount system. Did you know it's vacuum controlled in this car? At least at idle it is. And back here, there is a engine mount vacuum solenoid control module. That's what this is right here with this little cap on top that you can remove if you want and stick it back on. And it gets voltage from the car computer, battery voltage, 12 volts in there. And it has a vacuum line going down out of the top nipple going down. And then there's a splitter where it splits off to the rear engine mount right over there in the bottom and the front engine mount down here. So we need to find out where the problem is in this system. So we want to know if this engine mount control solenoid is good or not. So this is the part, this cap comes off, that's a vent in the top. All this does is keep water out and dirt. This has a coil and then battery voltage is applied here and it has a vacuum from the engine on this bottom one. So this is engine vacuum to the intake manifold and this goes to a hose down to the engine mounts. So if you follow this hose down you'll see a T and one hose goes to the rear engine mount, one goes to the front engine mount. So we want to rule this out as a possibility that maybe this might be the culprit in our engine mount problem. So we're going to test this with a couple of tools. Battery, 9 volt to simulate the car battery. You don't need 12 volts. Two test leads and some kind of a, a vacuum pump. I just got this new one, so I will use this. So let's set this up here. So I plugged in my vacuum pump, just like the engine would be plugged in here. And let's pump it up and see if there's any leaks. So the engine normally runs at 20 millimeters of mercury, and it is holding. No leaks in here. So, there's nothing coming out of there, nothing coming out of the vent. So what happens when you're at idle is the ECM, the engine control module, the computer for the car engine, will apply voltage to this, battery voltage, at anything less than 1,000 RPMs. You're idling. So your idle should be about 680 RPMs. So let's see what happens when we apply battery voltage my lead out here and just touch the other lead and you saw that it released through this valve here I will pump it up again do that again so we're at 20 I'm gonna plug this one that goes to the engine mounts you'll see it does barely anything. Maybe a little bit will come out through the vent. If I do it repeatedly, it lets out about one on the scale through the vent because I'm plugging that. There we go. So at idle, the engine vacuum would be drawing vacuum from both of your engine mounts, front and rear. This coil, when there's no voltage, is plugging it. Right here, it's plugged. And then when the coil has voltage at idle, it lifts up the block, and then you're open between these two. 
So the problem is if you've got a bad engine mount that's leaking internally, if it leaks air, at idle you're going to have air entering through your engine mount, coming through here when this valve is open at idle, and being sucked into your intake man manifold. So that is unmetered air. So it's past your MAP sensor. This car does not have a MAF, it has a MAP sensor. So we tested this, it is good. So no need to buy a new one of these. So on the car, if we look here on the driver's side and we take the bottom hose and we see it goes down and there's a splitter, if we follow that far enough down, there's a splitter right there and you can see where one goes in here to the rear engine mount and the other one goes down and to the front engine mount. So let's take that hose and connect our vacuum gauge to it. Okay, so we are hooked up to the hose that goes to both front and rear engine mount. And we are trying to draw a vacuum and there's a leak somewhere. It's either in the hose or one of the two mounts. a long hose to the metal fitting that goes to the rear engine mount only. So we're testing rear engine mount only. We're not drawing any vacuum. So we got a leak on the rear engine mount, internal leak. We already verified the hose that the mount is connected. There's no holes that I can see. And that mount is almost 21 years old. It's never been changed. The front engine mount was changed in 2014. So just the back one is bad at this time. So we know what part to order. Okay, so underneath the front of the car, we're just on ramps. You'll see by the exhaust pipe, be careful if it is hot, you'll see the front engine mount. And that rubber hose goes into a steel hose right there. So you can't disconnect it from the bottom of the mount while it's bolted in the car. So there's a disconnect right there that we can pull the rubber hose off and put our vacuum pump and test it right there to see if the engine mount has a leak. Okay, so I am plugged into the front engine mount, and let's pump it and see what happens. Let's go to 20. Okay, we're at 20. Let's just let it sit there. Okay, so we wait, you know, 15, 20 seconds. No leak on the front engine mount. That's good. So going back under the car a little further, next to the Flexible coupling, we look up and you can see, let get enough light up there. You could see a rubber hose to the rear engine mount. Let's see, can you see that? That right there is what we're after. You can also test this from above. You don't have to get underneath the car. So if you want to rule out whether you have a leaky hose or a leaky engine mount, you might want to test from down here to isolate the hose away from the mount. So during this test, I do have this vacuum line. I just stuck a bolt in here. It is plugged, so there's no leak to the engine while I'm doing this test with the vacuum line to the intake manifold off. So let's test what the engine computer does and it sends a signal right here at idle anything less than a thousand. You should get 12 volts out of these two pins here. So let's test to make sure the car computer is functioning properly. 
Okay, so we got our vacuum line to the intake manifold. It's plugged right here. Just stuck a bolt in there. I want to show you what this does at idle and at cruise. So at idle, we have battery voltage to the engine mount control solenoid. As we accelerate, the voltage disappeared because we're above 1,000 RPMs. As we return to idle, voltage comes back. So that would apply vacuum to both front and rear engine mounts only at idle. It makes them uh, isolate the vibration from the car at idle so you don't feel any vibration in the cabin. But at cruise, you don't need that. It's just the rubber mount itself. The voltage only at idle. Okay, so I have on the solenoid, I have the bottom hose connected to the intake manifold and the top hose, the top nipple has my gauge. So I wanna show you what happens when we start the car up. We're just gonna watch the gauge when we start the car. And what I did since I have a bad rear engine mount is down below. I disconnected from the rear engine mount, so I took the hose off and I plugged it. So the front engine mount is connected to this solenoid only. The rear one is capped off, so there's no vacuum leaks. So let's make sure this is working. So we have engine hose from intake manifold to the bottom nipple. This gauge is on the top nipple. This would be this would be our engine mounts, but our engine mounts are currently not connected. There's the hose going to the engine mounts is here. So we're not going to have any engine mounts for the moment. Let's just see what that solenoid does with the car computer controlling it. Okay, after about three or four seconds, we got 21 millimeters of mercury that's correct so at idle it will be giving engine vacuum to our motor mounts if they were hooked up they're just not hooked right at the moment so as we accelerate no vacuum so if you have a shop manual they've got these two hoses backwards in the shop manual I don't know, maybe it's something when they translated it from Japanese, I don't know what happened. So, at idle we got a little more than 20. Above idle, nothing, that's correct. So, that all is working correctly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my gauge. And I'm going to hook up the front engine mount only. The back one's removed and the hose is plugged. We've got our hose to the engine mount, only the front one for now, on the top nipple, the engine vacuum on the bottom nipple of the solenoid. I just heard that click after about three seconds. You can hear a little click in that solenoid. That's getting voltage and lifting to open and the vacuum's going through. So the front engine mount now has vacuum. Just heard a click again as soon as the engine slowed down below a thousand RPMs.
just clicked again. So every time that's clicking, it's opening and allowing back into my engine mounts. So the problem we have is we've got to get a rear engine mount. Can't find anybody has it in stock. The dealer wants an arm and a leg. I think $205 plus tax is the going rate right now. And some dealers are out of stock. So I made a diagram. So on that, we have the engine vacuum on the bottom one. And then when the coil has power at idle, it opens and it uh, goes to the engine mount. And at cruising, this has no voltage, so it's closed. And the engine vacuum doesn't have any leak in the manifold, so this goes to the intake manifold. So at idle voltage, vacuum goes from intake manifold to the engine mounts. We got a leak in one of them, so that's going to be a vacuum leak to the engine. At cruise, no voltage, no vacuum to the mounts. So now I'm on the hunt for an engine mount. I don't want to take the old one out till I get the new one in a box here ready to go. So today was just troubleshooting. I'll make another video when I have the part and we'll change the rear engine mount and it is a bear to get out. So see you guys next time.